You know what's funny? Um, I grew up in Germany, and uh, that was kind of my understanding of Western culture. And uh, when I compare Germany to America now, um, in America, people have this I have this idea that uh, America is like uh, one of the freest countries and uh, more, the mo one of the most individualistic. And uh, coming from Germany, I feel like uh, Americans are not really that individualist compared to Germany, for example. Like in America, you have many uh, collectivist ideas, many uh, these patriotic, almost nationalistic ideas, which would be considered completely absurd and uh, you know, uh, not likable in, in, in Germany, for example. Yeah, like so taboo. They're like, oh, yikes, I get a bad flavor in my mouth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you can't wave a flag in Germany. That's like, you don't do that. <laughs> I want to find, because there's a scale that I'm thinking of. There's a specific measure that people did. Countries ranked by individualism, because that's but what I was referring to. Um, but but freedom, freedom of speech, especially America is, I think, un unmatched in that. And I really, I really, I love that. I appreciate that so much about America. Yeah, you actually changed my idea of, you changed my opinion on the FBI. Like you personally changed uh -huh. on the FBI. Yeah. I, oh, I did? Yeah. Because I used to be like full-blown Antifa. Uh -huh. And um, I had, I went from being like, yeah screw the feds like abolish america like black flag emoji like ooh, ooh like <laughs> you um really having an appreciation for the feds don't really like people who want to take away our freedoms like i'm i'm down with that like <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome i appreciate that i went from being like the fbi is it well we don't say the word we say terriest uh -huh. okay if you're new here and you don't know what we're referring to, we have to use coded language for the YouTube gods. Okay, we're talking about people who do things like boom boom. Okay, uh -huh. so, uh, <laughs> I went from, like the FBI is the terriest organization to being like, here's some information on how to report this terriest to the FBI. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good change. <laughs> Yeah, it's a pretty good change. No, I came to appreciate them very much. I mean, I had these, uh, the FBI, whenever I had an issue with these uh, Islamists and Islamist sentiments, they were so helpful. And the last time I had these two FBI agents, uh, you know, visit me, drive to me, uh, visit me, sit down with me for an hour and just uh, be so supportive and so encouraging. I just, I just felt so safe. And when they left, I just, I felt so emotional and so thankful to be here. You know, I thought if I was in Germany right now, if I was in the UK right now, the police would probably be like, uh, well, you should just, you should just, you know, be careful and stop doing what you're doing and just, you know, don't provoke people and that stuff. And the FBI, the FBI agents were sitting there and were saying, hey, we are not supposed to be partial about this stuff, but uh, you fully have the right to do whatever you're doing and you you believe in what you're doing. You should continue what you're doing and don't let people deter you from what you're doing. You know, uh, we will make sure that you uh, live safely. And I was like, man, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Oh my gosh, way I have to address a uh, numb nuts in the uh in 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 the chat right now. Uh Hussein is saying that he reported this channel <clears throat> because we called Muslims terrorists. I would like you to find the exact timestamp where I said that because no one said that. I was mm -hmm. you you don't even know what group I was talking about specifically. I just said people who want to do those kinds of acts. Okay. There are a lot of people from other ideologies who want to do those acts. So I think, Hussein, you're telling on yourself. Yeah. You you, you told on yourself. You, uh, you, you exposed yourself, okay? If that's <laughs> what you thought I was talking about, because I was talking about anyone. I'm talking about anyone who wants to take away my freedoms, okay? <laughs> like, yeah. So, so Sana was actually saying anyone who does that, and Hussein Hassan was started to imply that all Muslims are like that. So, yeah, Hussein Hassan, you should report yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Projecting much? Um, uh, oh, okay. So, for example, for just in, um, I was referring to um, you guys can look this up on clearlycultural.com. It's really interesting. So, I was um, referring to what is this called? the gofs 
no, Geert Tofsted cultural dimensions. And there's lots, so if you um, study multicultural psychology, there's lots of different dimensions that cultures broadly are um, uh, studied on. And yeah, America ranks at 91 out of 120 oh. on individuality. So that's top out of individuality. And Germany ranks at 67. What? Well. So USA is number one. <laughs> <laughs> USA. USA. Yeah. <laughs> so I think we, we do have certain weird things about our culture here in the US. Like I think we're still very um we can we are still very puritanical in a lot of ways. Like so I went to Germany when I was 17. And um, the sex culture in Germany had me clutching my pearls. I mean, granted, like, this is also because I come from a heavily Catholic background, right? But I remember walking through Munich and um, or oh. going, um, I was going or I went. So first, like my first day in Germany, we went to a beer garden, right? And instead of going into the bathroom and in America, you go into the bathroom and there's like coin slots where you can get like pads or tampons or maybe may, sometimes a condom. No, I went into a, just a beer garden bathroom in Germany and it was like plan B, like a dispenser for plan B. I was like, what is happening? <laughs> like, <laughs> walking through downtown Munich with my family, you know, me as a, as a teenager. And there's just this huge store with a giant fluorescent neon lights that just is called sex world. Like all yeah, caps. Yeah. it's like crazy sex store. <laughs> We're all, we all like are walking by this. Like we don't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> Munich also has this thing. Um, this is this is quite common in many uh, German cities, but uh, nude parks, for example, where you walk through the city and and, and there's a park where people are just uh, you know completely exposed and lay there and stuff like that. It's 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 quite uh, common. Uh, nude beaches in the north exist very much. Um, so that kind of stuff is very uh, common over there. I I remember hearing this one thing, this one uh, phrase from. Uh, my teacher, which kind of gave me uh, very early on in school in Germany, the idea of uh, the difference between America and Germany, of what Americans allow and Germans allow. And mm. he said something like, um, he said something like, um, in Germany, when you turn on the TV, you see naked people. Uh, in America, when you turn on the TV, you see blood and violence. <laughs> you know, that, 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 that's what he said. So. That's kind of how it is. Like Germans are very are are quite intolerant when it comes to showing uh, violence and blood on uh, you know, in, in, in on TV or in games and stuff like that. I remember even having like video games, specific video game versions, specially made for Germany, that have robots instead of humans and like juice instead of blood and stuff like that. Whereas uh, <laughs> whereas Germans are so liberal when it comes to uh, nudity, you just you just turn on the TV on a regular time and you see uh, this program where people walk naked on, a, on an island and stuff like that. So yeah. Uh, you know what was so interesting and this just came to mind. I remember when I went to Germany, it was one of the first times that I had ever seen so much of a largely visible and concentrated Muslim population. Mm -hmm. Like in America, it's I, it doesn't feel as concentrated. And I remember walking through certain parts of Munich, like, I mean, this is again, me <clears> as a teacher, guys, like, cut me some slack. Um, just like confused. I was literally like, is this little turkey like yeah. where am i like i i it was it was very interesting to me and i mean you know i travel i haven't been able to travel for a long time which is um really frustrating but um like i had never seen so many women in hijab like in one place at once it was it was very interesting to me and i think that was probably the first time i saw a niqabi too uh-huh germany uh, yeah you have this thing uh, in in America. Um, I think there there are some studies on this. America has has one of the least uh, religious Muslim populations in the world. Mm. So uh, the Muslims in America are often just uh, 
distributed, far away from each other, disconnected. Uh, most Muslims report that they don't really hang out with other Muslims because they don't have many other Muslims around. They don't uh, participate in many uh, religious activities. They just become uh, part of the population and uh, you know associate more with uh, people from different religions, from with irreligious people or with Christians, for example. And that's simply not the case in Europe. In Europe, it's um, things are different. In Europe, you have um, in, in countries like Germany or France or the UK, uh, you have many areas, many neighborhoods that where Muslims are concentrated and where wherever you go, you find Muslims. In Berlin, for example, there is uh, one uh, part of Berlin, one district of Berlin, which is very central. Uh, you will you will find that it is almost completely, <laughs> uh, you know, um, that that it is full of Turkish people. You hear Turkish everywhere. You can you can meanwhile not hear any German speech there anymore because everyone's speaking Turkish. You go to a different part of Berlin and everyone's speaking Arabic, and uh, so many Muslims around. Muslims living there like it is uh, it is a Muslim country. So um, yeah, stuff like that is is very normal over there. It's probably also because it's uh, so close. People quickly move to that country, go uh, to visit their home countries every year or or every other year or several yeah. times a year so uh you have stuff like that going on in europe americans don't really know what that looks like and what that tastes like in america it's it's like muslims are much more divided <laughs> yeah. insane armin is going to come back on the stream and be a muslim again inshallah Iblis, okay yeah. uh, waiting for the second coming of armin exactly yeah. what do you think about the idea of like no-go zones like is because that's, you know, they talk about like Birmingham in the UK is kind of that way or certain areas of it specifically. And I don't really want to talk about that. I mean, <laughs> I mean, we don't have to if we don't want to. But I just think it's, I mean, this is completely not the topic of this stream. But I was just thinking about it, like, based on what other things I've read and my experience or talking to other people who have been there. And they're like, no, it's not a no-go zone. Are you kidding me? Like, it's almost a bit of a fear-mongering thing. But, I mean, your opinion would probably be colored because you're a very public critic of Islam. So, <laughs> yeah, well, it, it's uh, I, I will just be honest about it. Um, there is much, there is often much uh, exagger exaggeration associated with that whole uh, notion that there are no go zones or that, or that no go zones are quite common. But um, in many places, in Germany, for example, there are no real zones where uh, the police can't. Uh, you know, go through or, or where they, um, you know, where, where nobody can go in and safely come out. Uh, like there are version of Chaz. <laughs> the capital <laughs> occupied zone. Yeah. There are some places in Germany, for example, where uh, the police is extra cautious and where they, where they kind of uh, look out and fear for their safety and where they, you know, places that they don't want to be assigned to because they are known to be, uh, very uh, criminal, very high in uh, you know inhabitants of, uh, of 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 migrant backgrounds or direct immigrants. Uh, I think stuff like that is much more common in uh, France compared to Germany, and much more common in Sweden, for example, compared to France. And I, I think in Sweden there are more places where uh, you will find that there are, that there are entire neighborhoods almost exclusively uh, occupied by uh, or. How do you say that word? I, does occupied sound like I'm implying something bad? I don't know. <laughs> there are, we have an interesting comment from Afshin. Where almost only Muslims live, and where and where crime is extremely high, and where where the, where the police is very cautious. So there are maybe some places that are that are kind of close to what you would call a no go zone, and uh, some places that would directly be described as a no go zone. Yeah. yeah. Afshin is saying they exist, but they are exaggerated by media. I have lived in a no-go zone and had a bad experience. Afshin is an ex-Muslim. Was it because you were ex-Muslim or were there other factors? But still, it's exaggerated. Yeah, and I would agree with that. Our, oh, Hussein is saying he's calling Muslims criminal. What the, what the hell? <laughs> Hussein, Hussein. Let's get those, let's get those synapses firing, okay? <laughs> synapses firing. Um, you are kidding yourself if you think that there are it, it's impossible that there might be some people who are muslim who also do criminal activity just some just some that exist you know like he's 
I, I, I didn't hear AP saying, like, that's all of them. That didn't come out of his mouth. He's just saying, you know, like, there, there, there are some. Yeah, because, because there are some. Like, there are some Christians who are criminals. There are some atheists who are criminals. In every community, there's some criminal activity. Okay? So, kamate way, okay? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. What did you just say? Iblis Akbar, yeah. <laughs> so someone else just posted it and I just copy pasted it. <laughs> and also subscribe to our newsletter because if we get removed from all these uh, platforms, at least we could reach out to you. And guys, by the way, if you subscribe to our newsletter, you get a free copy. Uh, why there's not, where's your copy, Susanna? Get it, get it, get it. We're doing promotion. You get a free, it's not even promotion, it's free. Okay, so if you subscribe to our newsletter, link in the description, you get a free copy of Why There's No God. Ah, come on, like I'm handing it out for free. Okay, it's a bestseller on Amazon and you get it for free. So subscribe to our newsletter and you get a free copy of Why There's No God sent to you. Link in the description.